Hey everyone and welcome back to this... <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to this channel, my name is Onigiri and today we're going to talk about Cine Whoops again. So this is the second episode of a series I'm making currently on Cine Whoops. Like I said in a previous episode, I'm currently trying to find a good uh, or several good Cine Whoops for me to uh, fly around when I'm going on holiday, if I find some cool scenery. And I also want this Cine Whoop to be able to carry an HD camera. So this is pretty much my journey into finding a Cine Whoop that I'm sharing with you on this channel in case you would be interested. First off, this is not really usually a review channel, it's just um, an opinion that I have on drones. Um, I'm not telling you to buy or not to buy those products. And the second thing I want to say is I'm not going to compare the Cine Whoops um, to each other's. I'm not going to compare but the brands just because I want you to be able to just think about a Cine Whoop per episode and then at the end make your own call uh, based on the feedback I'm going to provide on these um, Cine Whoops. Today's video is going to be about the HG LRC V-RON uh, V3. The reason why I'm excited with uh, the HD LRC V-RON is because I've already used in the past one of their V-RONs and to be completely honest I had mixed feelings about that previous Cine Whoop. The previous Cine Whoop I tested from HD LRC was the V-RON V2 and my opinion is pretty much similar to um, Oscar Liang's opinion uh, on his blog. If you want to go and have a look and read his article about it, this is pretty much what I think as well. I think it was well thought, but there were a couple of flaws in it. And the main problem for me was around the ducts. They had put the foam inside the prop guards. And when I first unboxed it, I noticed uh, quite quickly that the propellers were very close to the foam, uh, touching some parts of it, or at least very likely to end up touching them in flights. And I was worried about this happening and then one motor burning and probably even destroying the 4-in-1 ESC that was in it. But yeah, that was that was a problem and I didn't feel like talking about this V-RON on my channel because of this in the first place. But this is why now I'm actually really excited about the V3 mainly because at first glance they finally put the foam on the outside of the prop guards. So I think we're off to a good start uh, with this one. What I also like about this version now is that they still have the carbon fiber frame that was in the previous version I tested, but the guards, the prop guards now are completely different. The previous one were 3D printed and they didn't look as sturdy uh, as I wanted. The new version have prop guards that are more like what I want to see on a Cine Whoop. So it's a full piece of plastic on each side and it just inserts inside the frame and then you add the foam on the outside. And I just think at the moment, looking at this, it looks like a big, big improvement from the previous version. What I'm hoping with this one is to put my GoPro Hero 6 in the long term uh, with it. I'm gonna fly it on 4S with the CNHL uh, batteries 850mA. This one is on analog because at the time when I discussed um, trying this one with HD LRC they were out of HD cameras which is fine because I still fly analog with my 5-inch um, drone so I'm happy to fly this one on analog. I'm gonna fly it with the Crossfire protocol so they've put the Crossfire Nano RX at the back. This stack in the middle is the Zeus FC that will have a um, better flight on it. The camera that I've put on it is the Cadix Rattle. The motors we have on it are the HDRRC 2004, sorry, um, 3000 kV, so it's exactly the same size as what I have on my uh, Micro Apex HD. Um, again, it's on uh, better flight, uh, as all my Cine Whoops and small drones are at the moment, so we're diving into this better flight journey again as well. Stock PIDs, nothing has changed. Um, ready to go. So I guess now it's time to do this maiden together. Okay, we are back um, to the second part uh, of testing this Cine Whoop. I've just flown it in my backyard because um, I am still in lockdown here in Australia. I think I'm ready to give you my opinion on this already and just like in the previous Cinebook video I'm going to focus on the three main aspects that I think are really important for Cinebook users. Agility, 
crash resistance and flight time. Here's a replay of the video of the few flights actually that I've decided to show you. Um, it is not stabilized on purpose to show you exactly how the drone fly, which uh, I think is very important to know. And as you can see, in terms of agility, with a little bit of wind, it doesn't fly like um, I was hoping it would. It definitely pushes me on the sides and it stops me sometimes halfway. If I'm hovering, you can see that I'm bobbling around and I don't know. I, I feel like it's very hard to fly it in a windy condition. I would probably still go and fly on a day like this with my normal 5 inch. So it's not like it's crazy wind. It's definitely something that a standard freestyle drone would handle. And I was surprised that the HDRC V run was struggling with this amount of wind. From one being very hard to handle and three being like my standard uh, five inch freestyle frame, I would probably put this one at two. So the few moments where there wasn't any wind, I felt like it was okay to handle, like I could really do some low passes, go around the trees, be precise, do a bit of proximity, which is important with Slivoop for cinematic flying. So I will probably go back to HDLRC, I will go back to friends that I know are flying these type of Cinewhoops from this brand. I'll try to refine the tune and see if I can just, you know, improve the behavior. That would be a good thing. So now resistant to crashes, I think um, because I got pushed a bit around by the wind, I ended up touching lots of things like touching the ground, the walls, the tree. Uh, so I think I banged enough things with this frame to tell you that I'm happy with how it behaves. You can tell there are very, very tiny scratches on the ducts because it's plastic, but it's definitely handling crashes well. Obviously, I will have to fly it more and see how it behaves in the long term. You don't want to crash any whoops anyway, so I don't see why this wouldn't get a 3. Let's say 3 and hope that it will um, stay like this and stay resistant in the long term. Finally, in terms of flight time, 14.1 volt is where I landed, so I would probably give 3 knowing that I can improve the weight in general. What you might have noticed is that I removed the foam. I think I just don't like foam. I think it doesn't work for me <laughs> because it felt like it was gonna fall uh, during the flight. So I didn't want to take any risk. I didn't want it to fly and do something weird inside the duct. So I just taken it off. And I think if I really want to keep it in the future, I might just glue it um, with a light glue uh, on the outside of the ducts and sort this problem out. I'm editing the video right now and I realized that I was able to stabilize the footage with Real Steady Go, which is also the first time that I've done it um, for, for me <laughs> on this channel. I never stabilized my footage. So it's actually interesting to see the results. I'm only playing a few seconds of it now, but I feel like um, I will do a quick vlog about it to show you the difference between the genuine footage and the real steady go so that's something i haven't included in the conclusion of this video because i didn't think of it at the time but um there will be a follow-up quick vlog just like i did for the previous cinewhoop and i will show you the difference between the genuine footage and the real steady go footage as you can see it's a demo because i have not bought it uh, yet but yeah there will be a follow-up so stay tuned if you're interested in seeing the actual um, cheated, stabilized footage from this Cinewhoop um, probably coming in the next following weeks. So thanks for watching today. If you like this episode, just feel free to subscribe, give me a like. And if you want to hear more about FPV, um, I have a podcast called Onigiri & Co. My regular co-host on it is Mayan Hai. You probably know her, she's into racing. Feel free to just uh, give it a go. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you're having some good flying at the moment. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.